Hello YouTube friends, Ben Ochart here. Thank you so much for tuning in. As some of you know, I took all the plants out of this tank so that I could uh, so I could wash them. Once they get that black, once artificial plants get that black sort of film on them, almost like a black algae of sorts, uh, it's really hard to scrub off. You can scrub, 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 and it just, it just stays on there. So what I did is I, um, I ended up putting them in a, in a five gallon bucket and soaking the plants uh, overnight in a very, very diluted bleach solution. So a couple tablespoons in a five gallon bucket overnight mixed it, mixed up. And then the next, the next day I was able to, uh, I was able to very, just with a light brushing, be able to get all the algae off of the plants and it worked out very, very well. And, uh, but uh, then, then after I did that, I, I let the plants soak after I rinsed them really well, I let the plants soak again another 24 hours in plain water with some prime. And what that did is it made it very, very safe for the plants to go back in the tank. But in the meantime, I had a tank with no decor and with fish uh, with no place to hide. And uh, if anyone uh, out there that, that keeps uh, African cichlids, you know that uh, hiding spots are, are important to these kinds of fish. So. Uh, so let me tell you what happened and uh, let's go ahead and get into it. By the way, if you're new to this channel and uh, you like to always be learning about, about taking care of fish like I do and, uh, and you're interested in new ideas, definitely hit that bell and hit that sub button and that way you'll get, uh, you'll get notifications when I upload new content and you can always be learning just like me. Also, you'll hear when I'm gonna be uh, going live, like on Saturdays at 10 a.m. Pacific when I do the Cichlids and Coffee live stream, and I get to talk with you about these subjects in a live format. So, um, at, at any rate, what ended up happening is um, I took all of the decor out, and I left a very bare, just a bare situation. You can see it here. And uh, some folks, I know that some uh, fish keepers, I know in the past, uh, for example, Evan Alexander, IFG, and uh, Adam C., people like that, uh, you know, who keep African cichlids or who once you know, used to keep African cichlids, uh, they like a bear, a bear tank, an open, an open tank, uh, claiming that there's no place to, there's no territory to defend, and because of that, they think that it'll be, it'll create less, less aggression. Me personally, I, I like a tank that has. Uh, hiding spots and places where uh, you know, the, the line of sight can be broken. And so in, the, in this tank, uh, I've always had some kind of decor that uh, allowed the fish to be able to get you know, off of somebody's radar. So they're getting a little bit startled here, off of each other's radar. So um, I am gonna end up putting the, uh, the plants back in but in the meantime, let, let, me, let, me, let me go over with you what happened. Surprisingly, to some degree, uh, with some of the fish, it was sort of like business as usual. You, know, you can see the Buchachromis notatania here just swimming around like nothing. And uh, maybe that's just a, um, a defense mechanism that they have or something. But, but the Buchachromis notatanias, I've noticed, they just, they just swim 24-7. They're kind of like the energizer bunny of the African cichlid world. They just never stop. And uh, this was certainly no exception. You can see him just going and going and going. And uh, so for him, it, it, it was, you know, nothing really changed. The um, Nimbochromus living stone eye, I mean, he, he didn't seem to really uh, be phased at all by the removal of the plants. He just was continuing to swim around the way he always does and uh, continue to eat like crazy. You can see how fat he is. He's about twice the size of his uh, two brothers that are in the 100 He's just a, a bit of a moose of a fish. The electric blue, the electric blue acted a little bit unusual during this time. Uh, for some reason, he was um, uh, hanging around uh, around the power head and was, was actually getting underneath the power head as if he was afraid of something, which is unusual because usually he's swimming all around the tank. So I don't know what was going on with him. And... Uh, but for some reason he was getting underneath the power head and uh, hanging out there. I really don't know why. You can see it here. That power head is, uh, is actually pushing a lot of water, a lot of, a lot of volume of water there. And, uh, but I don't know, you can see the detritus that, that's pushing around. But for some reason he, he found some sort of comfort being under there. 
a little bit of algae there growing under it that I can't reach with a scraper. But uh, you can see him. He'd just tuck himself under there and, and hang out. And he never would do that normally with the plant, when the plants were in the tank. So something changed in his head. I continued to have the, uh, you know, the usual chases that you see in a cichlid aquarium. You see the trout going on, going after the, the trout chasing someone is a kind of an unusual sight. And as usual, the, uh, the fire hap continued to be a jerk and uh, bullying whoever it is he could bully. Of course, he doesn't try and bully the Venusus. The Venusus continues to be the tank boss, kind of a benevolent uh, tank boss, kind of mellow, breaks up fights and things of that nature, but uh, nobody messes with him. He's got to be around 10 inches, very heavy. One fish that did have a rough go was the uh, Borlei quad. You can see a couple marks on his body where he took some shots. And that was primarily from the uh, fire hap who tends to pick on him. And, and he would be the one that hides in plants. So not having any plants really took the biggest toll on the Borlei. Everyone else seemed to, seemed to have weathered it okay. So that was the upshot. Uh, and uh, as I mentioned before, I'm going to be putting the plants back in. And... Uh, so the next time you see this tank, it'll be more like it was before, and uh, these fish will have a place to be able to uh, escape to if they, if they need to. Uh, the Borlei eye uh, will, uh, has continued to be uh, harassed by the, by the fire hap, and um, I'm not sure if I'm going to end up leaving the Borlei eye in this tank. Last time I, I, I took him out and put him in the 100, uh, he ended up being uh, just a real, a real jerk over there and upset the, that, that tank, which tends to be uh, pretty peaceful. And uh, even my wife mentioned what's going on there, what's all the splashing about. And, uh, but the, the, uh, the mix in that tank has changed. Now we have uh, you know, a couple of living stone eye in there, we have a sand diver, we have a gar, we have uh, you know, fish that were not in there before. So probably if I move this Borlei eye in there now, there's a good chance that, that uh, he's not gonna become the tank jerk and start pushing people around. So uh, I might end up putting him there, we'll, we'll see what happens. Um, and then, you know, after I put the plants in, let's see how it settles down and, uh, and we'll go from there because, of course, it was obvious the uh, Borlei I did take a, a couple shots there. Even though it's amazing, he still has a lot of color. He's still very active. The one that became the most inactive after I took the plants out was the uh, Electric Blue, who just sort of tucked himself under the power head and, uh, and uh, just made that his home. Even though he's a little bit more active now, you can see him. I'm not sure if you can see him on the camera right there. At any rate, that's it for me. Thank you so much for tuning in. Be sure to sub and rate and uh, share and uh, comment below. I'd like to hear your thoughts about an African cichlid tank being completely bare or being heavily decorated. Uh, what kind of tank do you have? What's been your experience? And also, I hope to see you on Saturday at Cichlids and Coffee, where we can talk about this and a lot of other subjects live. Okay? Thank you so much for tuning in. That's it for me. Bye-bye.